All right, so uh, as I said, this is our team today. Again, my name is Pietro Ferrari. I'm a professor in the, school, in the Architectural Technology and Technician Program, and I am the coordinator of the three-year technology program as well as the technology co-op program. Hoda? Uh, hello, everyone. This is Hoda. Uh, I teach at the actually all three programs, uh, especially second year and third year um of the architectural design technology interior design technology and on the second year of the inter interior sorry architectural technician program uh, johnny i am johnny regina i'm a professor in the first year of uh, both interior design and architecture i'm also program coordinator for the t132 the two-year technician program Hello, everyone. I am Viz Arby. I'm the professor and program coordinator for the Interior Design Technology Program. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Marlene Slopak. Um, I'm a registered architect with the Ontario Association of Architects, and I primarily teach in third year, though I teach in some other years also. And I look forward to teaching all of you. All right. Well, thank you team um let's move forward why is this not moving forward so uh, your mic's off pietro how's that great okay so in the school of architectural studies um with the people you met here we've got uh, five distinctive programs, a couple of which blend into others. The T109 program is an architectural technology program. And it's important to remember uh, in the School of Architectural Studies, we focus primarily on the technology side of in architecture and interior design. Um, so that's why it's very, it's very um, important for us to, to put the name in there properly. It's a technology program, it's a three-year program. There is a two-year technician program in architectural as well. And the both programs then have the opportunity to switch over. All the students are able to apply for qualifications into the T169 architectural technology program, which becomes an option in the third year of studies uh, based on specific criteria to qualify for that. Viz, over to you. Hi there. Yes. So pretty much the same thing in interior design technology, except that we don't have the technician program. We have the full three year interior design technology program that results in a diploma, advanced diploma at the end of it. Uh, some students do apply for the co-op during the course of that at the end of second year. And um, and so that's a different uh, code T179, but it sort of parallels the the main program. And currently we are applying for the degree. So uh, if that is successful, that will be kicking in in, in 2023. Thank you, Viz. Johnny, over to you for the who, what, when, where, and why. Thanks, Petro. So what is architectural technology and what is the difference between the two-year technician program and the three-year technology program? So in architectural technology, we deal with the methodologies and ideologies of architecture. How do we put things together? What are the principles behind them? What are the best practices for, for construction in terms of detailing? The building science aspect of the technology. Um, and it doesn't just realm with just detailing, but now there's different softwares we've been able to use over the last four or five years with assessment of, of building structures, of, of climate, uh, climatization uh, for sound attenuation. So those are different concepts that we bring in and our knowledge, and we give our basically two cents worth into the architectural firms or tier design firms. We, we look at what are the best practices and applications for uh, those particular items. When it comes to the two-year and the three-year program, um, the major difference is really uh, the software. I believe you get a little bit more software knowledge in the third year, in the three-year program over the second year program. The other is really the projects that you are exposed to in the third year, uh, higher level of thinking, higher level of work, more design application, the scope of work changes. So, um, you know, 
it's it's very the two first two years in in, in the program um, will help mediate and help students uh, Honey, get to a certain background and in information. The Johnny, third year, if I may, uh, just we're on a tight time frame. We we get into the distinctive programs a little bit further in the slides. Okay, fair enough. Sorry, Thanks. I rambled. Uh, no problem. So architectural technologists compared to architect and career options. What I like to tell everybody right off the, the easiest understanding is that they're, they're working together as part of a team. The architectural, the architect themselves have, has done uh, more schooling, uh, advanced over to a bachelor or master's degree program, and they are the licensed individual usually leading a project. The architectural technologists and technicians are part of the support team. They can also become licensed in their relative craft, in their, in their uh, particular craft. But it's like having a team with a leader, perhaps you know, if you assimilate it to a hockey team, you've got perhaps the franchise player that is leading the charge and the technologists are the support team with, that the, that franchise player needs to actually achieve the, the, the objective of winning a game. So our technologists are primarily a, a very strong support factor, but they also can become business people on their own, they're able to open their own practices, they're able to get certified of them by themselves in terms of technology and technologists and also pursue uh, career opportunities as self-employed individuals. So the interior design technology program um, also uh, graduates technologists in interior design. We're fairly new to the industry, and uh, but there was a real call for it. And that's why we have this program, because we didn't have enough support really um, in the industry for, for the big design firms. So um, that's primarily what our students do when they graduate, but there are other options as well. Thanks, Viz. There you go, Johnny. Thanks, Pietro. So in uh, the first year, so I'll speak to the first year, we focus on residential and small buildings. Uh, so it's all wood frame construction. We, we talk about the best practices uh, for wood frame construction, both in houses and small buildings, um, both on the building science applications of it. Um, we also talk about design in second semester where you design a residential project. Um, and you evolve it to using the building code in terms of the application to make sure that you're building code compliant. Thanks, Pietro. Second year, uh, thanks, Johnny. Second year is we take everything that comes out of first year, that the knowledge and skills you acquire in first year, as Johnny just mentioned, and you know we, we turn it up a notch. You get into multi-story construction and wood frame, you get into steel frame construction, and you also get into um, projects that use different and more complex parts of the building code as applied to those studio projects. But you also learn the next level of software, the next level of building science, the next level of structures. And you also begin to focus on some of the business and the practice management. And so every year is, is, a, is, a, is a further building up or building upon what you, you, you use or what you learn in the, in the previous year. Uh, so the main focus is on larger scale projects and more complex aspects of the, of, the, of the industry in terms of applied work in a project. Marlene? Um, so as Pietro and Johnny mentioned, um, in third, third year, we amalgamate everything that we've learned in first and second year and add to it. Uh, one might think that we've learned everything by second year, but buildings uh, become actually even more complex, um, taller, larger, more different materials we apply to our buildings and in different situations we do um, additions and modifications of existing buildings, which one might think seems simple, but actually add to the complexity um, when we're looking at adding different materials to an existing structure. Um, again, taller, bigger, more complex and different building materials. We focused on wood and steel in the first two years. We're looking at concrete in the third year and also uh, cross-laminated timber and hybrid constructions which use 
all the different materials. And one would think that we've learned everything by third year. It's still only the beginning. It, the third year really um, helps solidify, consolidate a lot of the information from the first two years and adds to it. Thank, Thank you, Marlene. You. Liz, over to you. Yep, I'm here. Um, so interior design technology. So first year, what we do is we actually have a pretty much exactly the same program as the architects do. And that's just so that uh, the students have a really firm grounding in building methodologies and construction, um, and then how to use some software that is useful for, for the uh, later years. In second year, that's when we really start to differentiate the program and uh, students start to do more design work and design work that is like specifically interior design based. Um, and then third year is again, sort of building on what they've learned in second year. So uh, there's a steady progression with all the courses from, from semester to semester um, until the end of third year. Thanks, Pietro. Thank you, Biz. So just to quickly go through the core curriculum, we have core curriculum in architectural studies, uh, sorry, in architectural technology, technician and interior design technology. And they, they, they're fundamentally focused on some critical, critical industry needs um, that we try to, you know, give the students a taste of while they're in in the college. So there's a there's a core group. There's also electives, but we're going to focus here on the core curriculum. And the first one off the bat, there's the architecture, interior design, technology, and studio. I'll speak to the architectural, and then I'll ask Biz to maybe say a few things about the interior design technology. The studio is where everything comes together. This is the uh, greatest amount of hours in a course. This is six hours weekly. It's a, a lecture and a studio class. This is ideally where everything you learn in all your other courses comes to play into your main project for the semester. So the studio project is where you are involved in either contributing on a design level or contributing on a technical level to the realization of a set of viable documents for a project. So there might be in first year that you're doing a single family dwelling and second year you're doing a uh, three story commercial and apartment unit, then you're doing an industrial building with an office interior, and then you move forward to the other, to the fifth semester, you're doing a multi-level reinforced concrete structure, and then in the sixth semester, you're doing a renovation alteration to an existing structure. All of those studio courses feed off of the congruent lectures and classes that are happening in that semester, but also that have happened in the previous years. So that's where everything sort of comes together and gels together. And everything we're going to talk about here all ties in. They all speak to each other, but the studio is where they really become, they really get applied in unison. Hoda, over to you. Okay, sorry, if you hear the alarm here, I cannot do anything about it. But uh, we teach a range of software in all three programs. Uh, we teach AutoCAD and Revit. Starting from second semester in all three programs, we focus more on Revit than AutoCAD because it's the main focus on the industry as well. Uh, we do a lot of architectural and interior design, as well as construction drawings, wall sections, details, and so on. Uh, we also do uh, and work on some uh, rendering engines, such as V-Ray and to Emotion as uh, well as uh, SketchUp for both modeling and rendering, uh, as well as Adobe software for visualization. Uh, okay. I'll talk about the Ontario Building Code. Um, the Ontario Building Code, we have to apply to any building that we des design in order to get a building permit to construct our buildings. It started off really as a fire code um, to stop fire from spreading um, in a singular building. But now over the many years, it has expanded to include health and safety requirements and most lately <clears throat> envir environmental features and um, accessible features um, to reduce the energy um, impact that a building takes um, and it's constantly um, expanding its domain um, 
for every project that we do, we have to apply um, the different features of the building code from first semester and second semester small buildings. There's different parts of the building code that apply to the more complex buildings. It's the law. Um, so I'll speak Johnny? to material methods. Um, in, our, in our industry, we use uh, wood frame construction. We have uh, engineered wood products that would fall as part of a uh, side to that. We also um, would use steel and concrete. So throughout the two to three year program, you will learn uh, with regards to those types of materials, but it goes beyond that. There's different um, infrastructure within the buildings themselves, uh, building envelopes, um, insulation, and you would learn all about those different products that we use within a build, regardless of whether it's a small house or a 20 story building, you would learn all the principles and uh, behind the materials themselves, what type of materials are different types of products that ca are categorized within that material type. Thank you. Thanks, Johnny. Back to you, Johnny. So with structural systems, we need to make sure the buildings don't fall. We need to make sure buildings don't sink. So with structural systems, you'll have the uh, background information that is required in order for you to ensure that uh, you're looking how a building will stay up uh, in, in uh, coordination with, sorry, with coordination with your actual design. So if you're gonna design something, you need to make sure that it'll withstand, besides time, the actual weights and loads and stresses on that particular building. Thank you. Uh, throughout the programs, uh, the two year and three year ones, uh, we talk about different aspects of sustainability, but also in particular on the very last semester and semester six of the three year programs, we also have a course on sustainable rating systems. Uh, when we talk about um, how the building meets or exceeds the Ontario building code regarding energy efficiency, we also talk about some, uh, some optional standards, uh, mainly uh, the LEED, uh, and the Energy Star uh, programs. Thank you, Hoda. Um, in practice management, as we say, it's all about business. Um, many of you might want to run your own business after you graduate. What we go through in the different courses in the college in regards to running a business is actually how to procure a project, but then how to um, go from the beginning um, the different processes and associations um, that are involved in um, designing this building. Um, we look at the actual practice management, the different um, records we have to keep. Um, we go through the documents required for site visits, <clears throat> change orders, um, Later on, we'll talk about documentation and specifications. Um, so all the different parts um, about practicing to make sure that the design that we have can actually um, be put up and the running of that business um, uh, pr procurement and actual then construction. Thank you. Pietro? Thank you, Marlene. Uh, lastly, building science. So what exactly is building science? It says here, why does insulation, <laughs> insulation make me itchy? We don't actually study that, but it's a question. Um, building science is really how everything comes together, right? How, how you actually enclose a building, create the commodity of a building, the protection of a building, the warmth and coolness and you know, what, what do we do to make, what, what is needed to make a building livable and durable? And we tie, it ties in everything that we've got here. Structural systems ties into the science, environmentally conscious sustainability, of course, ties into it. Everything uh, that is required for the actual coming together of all these elements that we talk about, what is the science behind that? And what is it that we're trying to achieve? Um, that is becoming more and more relevant today with, with our climate changing so drastically. And that ties in with sustainability and materials and methods. So 
uh, you can see how all of these things and some all of these curriculum components in some way tie into each other. They all complement each other, they all feed each other, and they all have to be integrated in order to successfully produce the product that we hope to produce. Uh, the other thing is that we are constantly trying to update them. Hoda was talking about digital practices. We've introduced specialty courses that deal with robotics and digital fabrication and laser scanning. So there's so many things that we're trying to stay on top of. So um, this is a really quick nutshell about what we do. We could talk forever, but we're on a time clock, so we'll move forward. So some of the, as I said, we've introduced options and we call them program streams. And, and these are them, these are the ones that we have right now. They're listed here. Uh, the first is concentrations in architecture. So in third year, our students are given the, the opportunity to select the stream that they feel they are most interested in, they like the most, or they find they want to pursue. Concentrations in architecture uh, in third year is taken by any student that wants to perhaps focus more on the conceptual uh, idea of design. Um, we offer that to students because obviously our course is, is very robust in technical aspects. But you'll see further on, we have opportunities for our students to articulate into master's degree, master's programs in architecture for those that want to pursue architecture and not, uh, you know, beyond the scope of the technology. So concentrations in architecture one and two deal with that specifically. Um, Hoda, would you like to speak to concentrations in digital technologies, please? Sure. So currently, concentrations in digital technologies, this is the second time we are introducing that. And uh, so far, it seems working OK. Uh, we have been introducing some ideas such as uh, computational design, uh, creating more complicated forms, nerves, surfaces, uh, how to work in between different platforms, uh, such as Revit and Dynamo, Rhino and Grasshopper, Revit and Excel, or Rhino and Excel. So uh, we take it a, a step further in learning new software um, and uh, learn a little bit of coding in between the architectural software, which uses like Dynamo in Revit or Grasshopper in Rhino. Yeah, and I, I imagine a lot of those animal names are new to everybody. <laughs> Rhino, Grasshopper, um, for some reason, those are the names of these very, I call them exotic software. They're just so cool. And Hoda does a great job. Uh, in that, and we've actually introduced a, a subcomponent now that we're looking at creating a sixth or depending on how many on what program another option called concentrations in I haven't even figured out the name yet physical asset asset acquisition, basically that's a fancy name for laser scanning buildings to then create them in a 3D model for you for various uses so that's something we're looking at right now to try to develop. We also have concentrations in building science, and I described what building science is. So somebody who is interested in the nitty gritty, the meat and potatoes of putting things together, building science deals with two courses as everything else does. The first one deals with new construction. So one of the biggest areas of liability and lawsuits in, in this industry is buildings that are not enclosed properly. So building science, building scientists, as I, I, we call them, uh, deals with that, uh, putting it together. And the first course deals with putting it together for a new building. How do you enclose it? What's the skin of the building like? The second one, building science two, deals with how do you do the same for restoring and reusing existing buildings? We see a, a large tendency for older buildings, especially in downtown Toronto right now, and some of the outlying areas like London and Stratford and Niagara Falls, they're reactivating old buildings into lofts, into apartments. Well, those buildings don't meet the building code standards that Marlene was talking about earlier. So what do we need to do to do that? It's almost like a heritage conservation focus, bringing buildings up to current standards. Johnny? Thanks, Petro. So with regards to concentration of project management, uh, we look at different types of contracts that are with industry. Uh, we look at the administrative portion of a project, uh, both from the consultant's point of view to delivery and turnkey to the client, as well as going through the process of understanding the processes to deliver the project with regards to uh, both 
administration of the project, uh, change orders that will occur during the project, and even the identifying how to do clash detection from different client, uh, sorry, consultants to mesh the drawings, both from architectural, structural, mechanical, and being able to integrate that into delivery of the project. Thank you, Petro. Viz? Okay, yes, um, concentrations in interior design, but before that I will, um, say that in interior design, we don't have as many choices. We have concentrations in digital technologies, concentrations in project management, and concentrations in interior design. So that's those are the three streams that students pick from. Um, and we've already covered two of them. The third one, concentrations in interior design, is really a conceptual uh, approach to interior design projects. Thank you. Thank you, Biz. We also have a lot of other neat stuff that uh, we'd like to talk about as well. So first of all, we mentioned earlier, I mentioned earlier about the co-op program. It's work integrated learning. Our co-op program is open to application to qualified students uh, in second year to then be pursued in third year. Um, again, there's, there's a list of criteria and it's all based on academic performance and interview um, that's something that you will learn more about when you get into the program, but that is a very, very, very fruitful opportunity for our students. Uh, most of our students that get hired, and I know from the architectural technology side, we, we our placement rate has been pretty good for the for eight years that we've had the program. 90% uh, of those students, I think just under 90%, like 89.6%, end up staying on full-time with their employers once they finish school. So those are great opportunities uh, for our students. Uh, Viz, did you want to say anything about the interior design um, co-op? Um, sure. So we we do have. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff listed here, right? In terms of um, what what students can do outside of the core program. Um, but your line, the third line has Lawrence Tech, and um, the fourth line has Yorkville University. Those are the two bridges that we have. Uh, in terms of where students can go afterwards to complete their degree. And as I said, we were going to also uh, try to get the degree as part of the our core offering. Um, in terms of co-op, to answer your question, Pietro, um, yes, yeah, so we, we have a maybe 10 to 15 percent of our students take co-op. And so far, they've been uh, pretty successful other than during COVID, but they've been pretty successful at, at finding placement and then staying in that job uh, once they graduate. Thanks, Viz. Uh, just, just mentioning about that is COVID did put a bit of a blip in, in the programs, um, but I'm happy to say that architectural technology wise, we were still fairly, fairly good at uh, putting place in most of our students and coming out of COVID now, hopefully uh, things seem to be ramping up. Biz mentioned degree completions. Uh, we have worked uh, uh, on uh, creating and maintaining agreements with universities to allow our students to articulate into an advanced standing for a degree. Viz mentioned uh, Lawrence Tech and Yorkville for interior design. We also have Lawrence Tech University for uh, architecture, uh, students articulate into a bachelor and then master's program. I believe they go into third year of their program. Um, Lawrence Tech and Boston Architectural College are both in the US. Obviously, Boston is one. We just had information sessions with these colleges actually over the last few weeks. Um, Boston Architectural College takes our students that meet the criteria and have finished the three-year program in architectural technology you go directly into a master's program in Boston, or sorry, in at Boston Architectural College, they do actually have an online master's as well that some of our students are, are here in Toronto doing. Lawrence Tech, I believe we have three students there now and three more have applied. Boston Architectural College, I was really happy to hear, we have 16 current graduates there. A uh, couple are uh, months away from finishing their degree, and we've had two that have already gone through and finished their degree back in Toronto. One's in Toronto, one stayed in Boston, and they're working towards getting their licenses. We have Kia in, in um, Copenhagen. Students, we, the, we either do an exchange with them or a straight articulation, and students can come back with a Bachelor of Architectural Technology. Uh, to Canada, that's a four year, that's actually an additional year and a half after you finish ours. And we've been working on 
opportunities in Italy, in Ireland, and just recently in Madrid. But of course, COVID just slowed everything right down. But uh, we're dusting everything off now and hopefully getting it back onto the tables. And then we also have st study abroad tours. So Biz has been to Chicago before COVID with um, her students. And I'll, I'll, Biz, I'll, I'll come back to you. I'll circle back to you about that. We've had our students proceed to um, opportunities in Sweden and London for with the geriatric students or the students that study geriatrics at GBC. And they looked at aging in place design and um, accessible design, universal design for, the, for an aging population over there. And again, we've been talking about opportunities in Italy together with some of our special projects or research, research projects that we're conducting. But as I said, COVID sort of threw a wrench into everything, but uh, we're hoping to dust those off very soon and continue with them. Liz, did you want to talk about Chicago at all? Um, sure. I mean, we've been to Chicago a couple of times for Neocon, which is the biggest interior design show in North America. And each time uh, about 15 students have come and it's been a great experience. We go for four days and students get to experience um, part of the, the industry that they don't normally see as part of their, um, their studies. So it's been really successful. Thanks, Viz. Before we, uh, sorry, Johnny, go ahead. Yes, before we end up, we have real, realistic expectations. Thanks, Pietro. So the program entails a lot of group work um, with different uh, numbers of groups. Every course has something a little bit different. Uh, one of the major program uh, course programs is the studio class. Uh, your group's going to be anywhere from two to four people. So, um, you know, it's very important that, um, that you understand that there is group work in our industry. It's highly um, incorporated in what we do in our day-to-day -day business, whether it be internally as in an office or externally through other consultants and clients. So it's very important to uh, be able to migrate into group work. Obviously, you're going to get the best out of your education and your knowledge based on your participation, based on attendance in class, um, and even just asking questions in class uh, through participation is one of the easiest and best ways to get the information. We just find students aren't willing to ask questions. And I, I know if there's one person with, a, with a, uh, a question, there's multiple people in the classroom. So, you know, it's very important that you, you do participate and attend the classes. A lot of our profs uh, are either practicing in industry or have practice, have lots of experience, and they bring that real life situation into a classroom. Uh, so it's not all about reading PowerPoints. It's not all about reading a textbook. There's uh, integration of, of real life scenarios into the classroom that brings that learning uh, to you uh, in the forefront. All this is very important because you got seven, eight classes with regards to time management. Understanding how to uh, manage your workload is very important. You know, you're going to have anywhere between six to seven courses, assignments being done. Uh, managing your time is a very important skill set that you'll learn and you'll get better and better at throughout the semester. It does become overwhelming. Another expectation is deadlines. One of the things I find is that students coming into post-secondary feel that uh, timelines and submissions, uh, deadlines uh, are, comp are, are, are um, uh, they can be swayed to, attempt to meet their needs. Um, uh, you can, you can, uh, uh, compromise that submission date and, and submit something at your own uh, free will. It doesn't work that way. So coming into our program, remember it's a full-time program. Remember there's different participation that needs to be uh, attended to where the guards fits in class, online learning, webinars, and, and understand how to coordinate all this time with your classes and obviously things that are going on outside of the school, such as big thing life, right? You go, we all have family. We all have other responsibilities. So understanding how this all comes together is very, very important. Tending the classes, showing up when you're supposed to, makes it easier to do things after school. Thank you, Pietro. Thanks, Johnny. Um, so I think we're just in time. Wow, maybe even a little early, but um, thank you for your time and interest. One thing I wanna add in closing before we go to questions is there's a vast opportunity to consider different programs out there and they're all fantastic. 
they're all fantastic. I guess how you uh, assess them is um, what what do you get in terms of additional additional elements once you, you go to certain certain colleges? And and you know one of the things that George Brown I think is extremely well positioned for is it's the only one that is actually in the core of the city, where most of the activity in architecture and design and engineering has been happening for 20 years, is happening, and is going to keep happening for, I foreseeably, for another 10 to 20 years. The, the economy, the projects coming down the pipe in this city are immense with the new subway and LRT systems. It's just going to expand and expand, and there's so much more going on down by the docklands. Uh, George Brown College's School of Architectural Studies, we do everything we can to stay current. We have an extensive network of industry partners, solid, large players from architectural, interior, builders, municipal, um, across the country. Uh, we also have a very reputable uh, standing with a lot of the educational institutions across the country. A, a lot of the faculty are involved outside of teaching with organizations that tend to lend, um, you know, tend to inform what we do and how we do it. So, I think, I think, as I said, there's, there's a lot of colleges out there offering the same sort of program. They're all based on the same fundamental principles. We are constantly shifting. We are, our, our objective is always the same, but as the objectives, sorry, as the parameters change with new technology, new software, um, all sorts of new elements that are coming in, we try to stay on top of that and stay current. So we hope we've presented a, bio, a good solution to you uh, for consideration and thank you to the team and we're open for any questions. Awesome, thank you so much Pietro and team. Um, this was very informative, lots of wonderful information here for students and the room really filled up. There's a, there's a lot of people here right now, it's great. Uh, some people that were in the chat earlier and some new uh, names that we're seeing. So uh, if you want to use your mics to ask questions, please go ahead. Uh, I see a hand already, Pam, you can go ahead. Hi, yes, I'm just wondering, um, are any of the courses, if you're starting in January, are any of the courses in person or is everything online? And if it's online, is it like asynchronous or synchronous? Um, this, Ian, did, are you still here? Did you wanna address that question or should we? Sure, I'm here. Uh, hi, my name's Ian McNabb. I'm the uh, chair of the School of Architectural Studies and the answer to your question is for the first semester starting in January, it will be slightly more than 50% in person. Uh, and we expect that number to increase. Um, but we are taking quite a conservative approach to bringing students back into the classroom. And generally speaking, where we have online that is synchronous, although many of the professors also record their sessions, making them available asynchronously as well, but not everybody does that. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Great. Wonderful, thank you, Pam, and thank you, Ian. Um, Wontak, you've got your hand up, go ahead, please. Oh, thank you. Um, so I'm interested in the two-year courses, which is T132. Um, but I just, after, after this speech, I'm quite interested in the three-year courses. Um, so my, my point is which one, which course might be better for me because I'm an international student and I'm planning, I'm, I'm focused on the get job fast as I can. So could you give me some advice, please? Like me to comment on that, I guess. So um, the two-year program, um, you know, for all intents and purposes, it's it's a good program. Uh, there's knowledge that you will learn that you would be using in industry. Uh, the difference being, again, it's two-year rather than three. That being said, you know, uh, at this point in time, you like other students who are international students are coming in. Are, are, are questioning whether they should take the two-year program or take the three-year or maybe go into interior design. 
I find students after the first year, their minds or their thought process of what they intended to do will change. We have a lot of students that come into a two-year program and really enjoy the program, but all of a sudden will go into the three-year program or transfer into your design program because they feel it's more suited to them. Uh, and we have students that do the same thing after two years, they'll you know, go into the three-year and then migrate to, uh, to articulation program. So my suggestion to students is when they ask me questions like that is, I think you need to get into the program. You need to experience the first year and, and decide from there what's best for you. Um, just like anything in life, when you, when you deal with something, as time goes on, you, you get swayed a different direction, things happen. So I, I would embrace the program with the two year, but don't create options and, uh, uh, for yourself at this point. Just be unbiased, enjoy the program, and decide from there on a semester-to-semester on a -semester basis or year-to-year -year basis on what's best for you. Um. Johnny, if I could add to that, in my experience, that um, we do have many returning stu students who have um, a lot of past experience in education, especially many of our international students, they might have a degree, uh, bachelor's, sometimes master's, sometimes even PhD in um, same field or related field and want Canadian experience. Um, and sometimes for those students, uh, two years is enough. Um, for students um, that have no experience in the um, architecture, interior design, construction industry, uh, very often they don't feel that two years gives them enough exposure or confidence um, or knowledge. Um, and really um, feel that they need that third year. Okay. Well, thank you for, yeah, thank you for your advice. And just, I have one more question. Um, is it available to transfer to two, two years co courses to three year courses after when I take just first semester or second semester so once you enroll in a two-year program if you wanted to enroll in the third um you would uh, do that request through your coordinator and through our administrative student support staff and you'd be put on a plate on a uh, wait list at that point you'd be um you know first come first serve basis obviously so if you know sooner than later then yes you'd put your name there and you would uh, move forward from there so it's really up to the student when they feel it's time Okay, I got it. Thank you very much. No Great, problem. thank you. I see Pam, you've got a hand up again. And if anyone else is not comfortable coming on the mic but has a question, feel free to put it in the chat as well. I'm keeping an eye on that. And Pam, you can go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, I like to put it in the chat, but it says my chat's disabled. I don't know if that um, is oh, something. Sorry about that. that, I'll check. Thank you. Yeah, um, but I did have another question. I'll just ask it again. Um, so starting in the January, do you have any idea what the class sizes are like? Like just typical, it doesn't have to be exact. Uh, uh, Ian, unless you wanna take this, I could give it a, I could try answering it. Uh, so it, it does depend on what the class, very much what the class is. So having said that, I'll defer to Pietro. For the, uh, some of the online classes are quite large um, and we in-person classes are necessarily much smaller. So I'll, I'll hand over to Pietro at that point. Thanks, Ian. Um, Pam, I'll, I'll say right off the bat is we are a very uh, popular uh, program. We arguably, our technology program is, as the Royal Architectural Institute of Canada has told me, it's the largest in Canada. We are in the hub of, of activity. So we, we tend to get large cohorts every year. And then the, the large cohort tends to break down into sections. So it could be anywhere between five to six sections of anywhere between 30 to 40 students per section. And those are governed by the, the, um, the ability of profs in the studio sections to administer and manage uh, that many students. Uh, 
ideally it would be greater if it would be smaller, spend more time, but you know, we've got a, for example, the studios are four hours. So over the course of the four hours, we, the intention is that, you know, all those students in that section have opportunity to meet with their professors. Lecture wise, they get larger. For example, I know in my second year, I have the core lecture for the studio. I have approximately 200 students overall broken down into two lectures. Um, then those 200 students break out into sections of uh, into six studios overall. So you can do the math and that would be a typical studio size, but the lectures can be larger, smaller. If we're on campus, there's room limitations. If we're online, the room limitations are somewhat obliterated, but those are the numbers. You know, the critical one is the studio. If you're looking at 30 to 40 students per studio on average, um that's a safe bet for you to sort of revolve your numbers around or your thoughts around does that answer your question thank you yes thank you um i don't see any other questions in the chat does anyone else want to come on the mic and ask any questions we've just got a few minutes here before we have a choice of either going back to the main room to check out another presentation or heading back to the uh breakout room where we can stick with some of the faculty that are able to join us there so any other questions for this room I noticed um, because it's the Casaloma campus and the residency is like really far from the Casaloma campus that I was looking on the website. So is there anything like near the Casaloma campus that like could be like, like for rent or anything like, is like the nightlife there like a lot and is there like a lot like of places to like live and stuff or is it really like industrial? Um unless anyone wants to, I could take this. Um, thanks for your question. The residence is downtown, the George is downtown. So it's not the most convenient thing. We do have students students in at Casa Loma that live in, in the residence downtown, uh, but around Casa Loma, there are quite a few opportunities for rentals. Um, a lot of our students live in the area and within the last couple of years, there's actually been a lot of activity in that general area of Casa Loma campus. And there are uh, new opportunities coming up. There's some apartment buildings that have gone up. Uh, so there will be a lot more rentals. So there, in terms of, you mentioned the word nightlife, um, Casa Loma campus is within a residential district for the most part, it's just south, it's just north of Bloor. So if you travel down to Bloor a little bit, you know, you've got a lot of opportunity there and it's right on the subway line. You get on DuPont and you're downtown in two seconds. So nightlife nowadays is, you know, the boundaries are, are sort of blurred, but um, Casa Loma campus is not a hub of, you know, social activity and, and um, just because it's in the residential district, but the, the activities that perhaps will lead to, you know, social life are very close by. I, I don't see that being a problem and students, definitely find rental space spaces around the campus. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Great, thank you. And I see a couple of questions that have cropped up in the chat here. So JSP has said, how many people do you, uh, do you accept per year in architectural technology? And have you started sending out acceptances yet? um ian did you want to take that i think ian had to head out oh okay uh i, I who sorry who asked that question jsp jsp i don't know if you asked that after or before i said what i said earlier but I, I mentioned some of the numbers um so i think johnny you could probably speak better than this you're you're looking at about a total of a couple of well and also depends on okay architectural technology probably a couple of hundred in first year. Johnny, is that a safe number based on the six studios we have? On the six studios, uh, is that just with architecture? If it's with architecture? Yeah. Um, it's just the architectural tech side. Yeah, we're looking at close to about 180 plus, it varies. Yeah. 
we, we've had we've had numbers over 200 at, at some point as well over the last couple of years pre-COVID. But I, I think uh, the last year it's been about 180 something. Your second question, JSP, have you started sending out acceptance yet? I think you need to ask that in the main room. We don't know. We don't get involved with that administration part at all. Um, we see you when you're there. We don't see you before you, you get accepted. So that would be a, a question for the main room. Perhaps Michelle can answer that question. Okay, JSP what, is there, thank you. What do you mean by the acceptance? Is it for the winter or for the fall? Oh. Adele is here. Okay, good. If you, are, if you are asking about the winters, the winter program is still open actually. And uh, well, once you apply, you will receive the, uh, the uh, confirmation. But if you are talking about uh, fall, fall, we still, still, we didn't, we still don't like send the, the acceptance letter right, uh, yet. But once people, the, student, the, the uh, interested or uh, potential student apply, then I believe sometime in February, they will start sending them the uh, acceptance letter for the fall. For the but fall. for the winter, yeah, for the winter, the program is still open and those who are interested, they still can apply and they will be admitted. Sorry, Adele, I didn't realize you were there. Perfect, thank you. No, no, no worries. Thank you, Adele. Students, uh, for those of you that don't know, Dr. Adele is the dean of our division, so he's definitely uh, great to be in this session and answer that question. Thank you so much, sir. Wonderful. No There's another question we see in the chat from Yasir. Uh, he says he checked the School of Boston uh, of our sorry Boston School of Architecture for online master's programs. It says you need an undergrad degree for acceptance. Uh, he's asking, Pietro, did you say we can apply with the advanced diploma from the architectural technologies program? Yes, yes, here we have a specific agreement with Boston Architectural College that we signed a few years ago, and it's actually up for renewals, I think this year or next, where they have vetted all of our courses, they have looked at student work, and they basically said, based on what you're doing, we accept all your three years of credits for your students, and we will place them directly into an undergrad, uh, sorry, into a master's program. Uh, so that that is what you see on the website is not indicative of what has transpired with respect to a signed agreement with our institution. Uh, as I said, we have 16 students now. They literally graduated from GBC on, in, in April, and then they were at, um, Boston College in the fall in their master's program. So they take 100% of our credits directly into a, a master's program. Uh, it's, it's a, this is a fantastic opportunity. Like that's unheard of. You can actually get a master of architecture in five years. And in Canada, if you do it through a university, it might take you six to seven years. So it is an incredible opportunity. 